And now here again is John Killinger. John, you have an amazing sense of history and a, an amazing capacity to forecast the future. In your message on inspiration, you convey the um, story of Christ's breath, mm -hmm. the breath of Christ. I must ask you, how does that breath of Christ inspire you personally these days? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe uh, sometimes I think too much. I, uh, uh, I feel, as I get older, released to do so many things that I didn't have time to do before. And uh, I spend a lot of time writing, as you said earlier. And uh, in fact, uh, I hate to admit it, but uh, in the last year I've written five books. That's too many. I mean, I, I admire people who take 10 years on one book. And I sort of feel a little suspicious of anybody who writes that quickly, but uh, maybe that's the breath of Christ to some extent. I, he may be responsible for the good things, and I'll take the credit for the bad things. You told me before the program that your message on inspiration was a challenge to write. Why? Well, I think uh, just dealing with the whole idea of inspiration as more than uh, a kind of sentimental thing that happens to people when they see a a tree or a flower or something like that. Uh, I think the challenge was in the fact that this is a central category of Christian faith and theology and to try to treat it with broader strokes than I would have used had I been addressing the Ladies Aid Society or something like that. Because there are people who would say that war and violence are the air that we're breathing these days. Well, they certainly are. But on the other hand, I mean, you have to look, I think you have to back off and look at the world and all that happens to it over the years. Mm -hmm. And you realize that uh, we have cycles of war and destruction and then cycles of rebuilding and rediscovery. And uh, pain and uh, resurrection are often mingled together. And uh, we're going through a very bad patch right now. There's no doubt about it. But I think at the same time, we have to remember that people have been through even worse in the past and have come back uh, with uh, bells ringing. You ended your message with a wonderful um, story about Dean, yes. the, the lovely elderly lady parishioner yeah. uh, who, whose twinkle in her eye I think is still a source of inspiration for you. But is it because our seniors are the ones who remember the past? I think that's part of it, and part of their remembering the past enables them to live a little bit like, uh, I remember a guy named Roger Babcock once wrote about the little duck that floated on the water, and no matter how big the waves were, the little duck just managed to ride over them. And he talked about uh, getting to the point in life where we can do that, where we are not submerged by every wave that comes along, but we have this buoyancy that comes from faith and understanding. Mm -hmm that allow us then to uh, ride out the habit. Sub submerged, and, and most of us, as Studs Terkel says, are suffering from a national Alzheimer's disease. We don't <laughs> remember what happened a moment ago. That's true. But That's true. In, in Dean's case, she was optimistic about the yeah. future. She wasn't a, necessarily a student of history or anything like that, but I think at 80 years old, she'd lived a life of faith and uh, she had this kind of, uh, of gyroscope in her that kept her upright despite whatever was happening to her. I mean, here, here was a little lady who was having the physical ailments you have at that age and uh, who lived alone. She lost her family and everything. She was really alone. And yet she had that uh, buoyancy that comes from knowing your Lord and knowing that uh, uh, life is going to go on beautifully if you let it. And the continuing dynamism of Christianity, as you point out, yeah. isn't that because of its capacity to be ever evolving, as Karl yes. Barth would say? Yes, it's, it's, it, Christianity is so big and so flexible and uh, is so capable of adapting. And, uh, you know, this is why I think it's unfortunate that some people feel that they have to defend it uh, and keep it just the way it was, who are unwilling for it to change and adapt. They, uh, it, it betrays a kind of deep inner fear about life itself. And Christianity didn't teach us that. Christianity you teaches help, us to trust. You've been teaching about trust and helping us to 
come to grips with some of those fears in our culture. Thanks, John Killinger. Yeah.